I'll just give you a sort of you know, orient, overall orientation into my thinking about the organization of these lectures. And I do this in part so that you tell me what you think works in retrospect uh, is I, I went through all the imposers, right? And now I'm gonna go through the transposers, uh, but actually I sort of cheated. And at the beginning, we did this whole thing with Shisham series, which are transposers. But I, but I sort of felt like, well, we have to, it, you know, because some of you don't know Chinese characters, we needed to kind of look at how Chinese characters are structured. Uh, but then I feel a little bit conflicted, like maybe I should have just gone through all the imposers and ignored the Shishan stuff and only done it now. Yeah, so, because um, uh, now I'm turning back to it and that feels, it feels a little bit messy to me. So, uh, you know, you can, you can let me know after, maybe we're at the end of the course, whether you think it should have, all started now, or whether maybe all of this should have been at the beginning. Uh, I just uh, index that as a kind of it's a as a pedagogical question. I'm not really sure. So uh, so we've seen the Shishan series before, uh, and now we're coming back to them. The first time we saw them, the point was just there's such a thing as the Shishan hypothesis. Chinese characters have a phonetic and a, and a semantic component. Now we're looking at them qua the oldest available transposers, yeah? Uh, maybe not a particularly meaningful distinction, but uh, what I have decided to do, well, let me just go through the slides, yeah? So reminding ourselves, uh, the shifting hypothesis, so only initials from the same point of articulation are allowed in Shijun series. Uh, and then we, I won't, you know, we'll, we'll do this in an extra fast way, right? You remember, okay, we, we say the palatals are palatalized dentals, and we take the retroflexes back to either a, a, a medial R or a pre-initial R. Uh, so these are those proposals. Uh, then we have our lateral series. Uh, yeah, and then we have our voiceless resonance. Uh, and then we have our more voiceless resonance, uh, and yeah, you remember all this, right? So I'm just refreshing your memory. These are all the simple uh, consonants, if you like, and today we're gonna focus on its consonant clusters. And then last, uh, the uvulars, yeah? So you remember all this. Anyhow, this, and then here you see the, uh, this is, yeah, so this, this is the initial we were talking about earlier. This is the special division three uh, voice velar fricative that uh, they use as their default uh, reconstruction, this uh, voiced labio uvular stuff, yeah? uh, whereas uh, this one, no, that's, oh, I can, yeah, that's the, uh, the, the, the other one, the, which should have had a little, Oops, I really hit the wrong button there. <laughs> so, those of you who, you know, okay, here we are. Back. Okay, again. Yeah. And this is the, the, the summary of the year yeah. yeah, so that we all covered. Right? Uh, so, oh, and then, yeah. So now we move on to. Uh, Shishan evidence for clusters. So uh, when you did your homework, you ran into stuff you didn't know how to deal with. Uh, hopefully, uh, this will cover most of that. So uh, SMA becomes SU. And here you see that we have this character, which is just read as fun. So what is it doing in this series that's mostly red mom? Yeah. And back from cigars answer is it comes from smum. Yeah. And then you will notice that uh, in these cases, which I mean constant cluster evidence, I will sometimes give pre-chin forms. That's because in these cases, the, the Shechem relationship is non-obvious. Right? If you look at this character, you don't see this mom inside it. But if you look at this character, you do see this mom inside of it. 
right? Um, so is this seal script or what? What uh, type? What style? Are they so, so I'm leaving that to one side. Basically, uh, so I'm just giving you evidence that it's in the same JSON series, and for that, I'm just giving you some preaching form. Yeah, and they're all uh, they're all copied from Backstrom Cigars book. So, uh, so they give some more paleographic information, uh, but actually not that much. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and, and if you like, you know, the question is how old are Shesham series? And when is each character in a Shesham series coined? Yeah, uh, so that's an important philological question that there aren't convenient resources for me uh, to check on. Uh, so in this case, I'm just whenever it's non-obvious from the computer font that, that you you know get if you're writing someone an email, then I add a preaching form. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's also not a coincidence that that it's in these cases where the sounds have really veered quite far away from each other that then the writing system has also uh, not maintained the obviousness of the link in the sound. Uh, okay, so anyhow, uh, sma becomes ma. And then uh, sma also becomes sa, sorry, sma becomes sa, sa, sma also becomes sa in type B syllable. So here, here's an example from a type B syllable. Yeah, so this, this switch is the, uh, is, the um, is the phonetic in these other two characters. And then here you get, and it's nice because here you get the, the voice with resonant and you get the SM cluster, and then you see why they need both, right? Okay. Uh, and then, you know, it won't shock you. But then um, SM becomes X, and SN becomes S also in type B syllables. Sna uh, becomes so, and then here's where the where I think we looked at this series before, right? We looked at this series and we saw that Carlgren sees this as its own Shaysham series, as the head of its own Shaysham series. But Baxter and Cigar see them all as the same Shaysham series. And you can understand that as being Carlgren had no hypothesis at his disposal for explaining why on earth this character would have the fish in it. So he said, oh, it's its own Shaysham series. Yeah. And, and it starts with an S. Uh, whereas back from Cigar say, oh no, uh, it goes back to a Suna, so it makes sense that it has this fish in it. Yeah. Uh, and also in I B syllables. Yeah, okay. And then Sla becomes Su. Yeah, so generally speaking, uh, you know, S resonant clusters just are reduced to S. Now, is that a regional sound change? It actually happens in a Tibetan dialect. So, like for instance, in that in a particular Tibetan dialect, the written Tibetan word no sna just becomes sa. Yeah. So, uh, it is a sound change that I can parallel. Uh, yeah, and then this one's nice too because uh, you know wh wh why is the lateral series? Well, you have the ya da connections. And then you also have this tub. So, you know, so now you see we have this, we have this extremely messy Shesheng series, uh, but we have some tools to clean it all up to being a uh, lateral initial prediction. Uh, yeah, so yeah, T could not occur. No, T could not occur. Yeah, and, and actually that's a good way of putting it because it's not like we can just do anything. Yeah. Or, or our hypotheses are carefully calibrated to only give us what we want. Is maybe the right way to put it. Uh, so you get, you know, Ds and PHs and, and Ys and Ss. That's a lateral series, but you won't get a, a, a plain T in such a series. Um, yeah, I'm just tempted to say as an aside. And so all Chinese does have T, TH, and D. Uh, but there aren't very many THs, and I mean this for all places uh, of articulation, in Old Chinese. 
Uh, and then you see like a lot of the THs in middle Chinese are coming from things like laterals um, and various clusters and whatnot. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'm not that it would be a particularly good assignment, but, but looking at, is there some way to get rid of the remaining aspirates in old Chinese it, it, it is, is a desideratum in the discipline. Yeah, I should probably say that, you know, next week, but uh, <laughs> we won't get there. Uh, okay, and so then we also have uh, S before Q. So, you know, here's a, a, a and whenever you have the, the, the voiceless velar fricative, right, that's indicative of a uvular series. So now we have an S coming up in a uvular series. So then we take it to a cluster S plus uvular. Uh, and then also in type B syllables. Uh, okay, and then uh, why not with the H? But here I say it is not clear to me why Baxter and Cigar choose SQH rather than SQ. Yeah, they don't say anything about that. But yeah, um, and 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 I yeah I don't there's there's nothing that I know of that. Uh, would motivate that uh, distinction, but they make it, yeah. Uh, and what do I say? Uh, uh, and we could also take it back to a, uh, a U, uh, sorry, Beeler series, right? So I'm, I'm not sure I've discussed this thing, but 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 in their system, ma before, I think I did, ma before uvular gives us a, a, a velar nasal in Middle Chinese. So if you see a velar nasal, an H and an S, yeah, you could take it back to a uvular, but you could also take it back to a, a velar nasal by having just a velar nasal come from a velar nasal, the S come from an S in front of a velar nasal, and the H coming from a voiceless velar nasal. So this is a sort of place where, like, you know, um, I don't know, where where maybe we have a slightly too much machinery available to us, or at least, you know, it would be totally as, you know, as far as I can tell, in keeping with Baxter's to our system to reconstruct this way. But this is not what they reconstruct. They reconstruct this way, and pre presumably they have reasons to, but they don't always say what those reasons are. Yeah. Uh, okay. And then uh, here things uh, are still pretty tidy. So STS goes to S, and if we have a Shaishan series that mixes TS and S, then maybe we can take it back to an STS. This is a sound change that actually happens in standard events. STS becomes S. Um, and here in type B syllables. Yeah. Now SR is going to become in Middle Chinese a, a retroflex S, which you expect, right? Uh, and here we have, you know, uh, so we have we have L's go back to R's, so then a K. And then the K in such a series were better than AR. I'm not sure that I discussed that, although it did come up in someone's homework. Uh, and then what do we do about an S in that series? Well, we can make it SR. Now, um, they, well, let's see if I say anything like that. No, I don't. Uh, yeah, maybe I should. But they, they end up having S, like SR with the R being the initial and SR with the R being the medial as uh, having potentially different outcomes. Uh, and I don't think that's great. Uh, okay, so, and then now, basically, this is just, I'm going through again with the R medials because, because this red reflex R is a different outcome in Middle Chinese, according to Middle Chinese phonology, but it's all what you expect. Right? So uh, we have, you know, uh, that uh, and then we can also get uh, palatal s's. So here we have uh, these palatal s's coming up in what otherwise would be a dental series. So why not take it back to an st in type b? Uh, just going to you know, yeah. Okay. Uh, now here we have a k series. And we have a sh in it. So why not take it back to SK? 
Uh, yeah. Sorry, the, the R series, K, well, which comes out as L, then it can combine with K, but not with G or other. No, it can. I just haven't, like, this was just an oversight in, you know, three days ago or something, which is if you get an, if you get an L series mixed with, is it just with Beelers? I think it's just with Beelers. Yeah. Then you, I mean, it, it, it's still a sort of tricky question for the Shechan hypothesis because, you know, yeah, because which, where you should start counting your initial? Or, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, th 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 there are, and actually, maybe another way you could, you could sort of discuss, you know, if you want to go back to this, where are the R's? Are they medial R's or are they pre initial R's? Some series uh, have, uh, let's say, have velars where sometimes the vowel coloring or 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 other uh, things make you want to see some kind of ariness in them, uh, but they don't have actual characters written with la initial. Yeah, so there there are those which where you might say the the retroflexion or it's not even retroflexion the the, the vowel rhoticizing comes from the influence of a pre-initial. But I would say if you actually have R initials, old Chinese R initials, and middle Chinese initial L's as full-fledged characters in this series, then that means it's definitely going to be a, an, a, an R medium. Yeah. Uh, and what, what I would do, actually, let's say, just if we want to be sort of mechanical, and I think at one point in the past, Baxter and Cigar did this. So we have... Um, we have a series where we have something like Kang and Lang in it, right? And then maybe I'll just say we also have uh, that word. Well, I don't know whether this would actually happen, but let's say it does. Uh, so just given, so, so. The B referred to generally go back to G. So then, and L's generally go back to R. And then K's, you know, generally go back to K's. So then we have K, R, and G in a Shechan series. So then you want to say, oh, somehow the, you know, to use the term I used earlier, the sonus grammai, I shouldn't put the star actually, uh, of this series is kram, right? Uh, and then we would, you know, if we were Romanizing, let's say we have, uh, you know, this one uh, has a tree, and then uh, I'll just do an at symbol or something. And then this one has water, and then at symbol. You know, we could say this one is uh, arb, uh, kram, and this one is, uh, and then this one is ak, kram, right? But then, the, then you say, yeah, sure, but you know, at, at, R and K don't have the same place of articulation, right? There, there's still a problem here, right? Uh, and a, a mechanical solution that I believe at one point in the sort of early 2000s, back from Cigar did is they would take this one back to, uh, or here I'll, I'll, just, I'll just erase them and write the proper reconstruction. We take this one back to Krong, and we take this one back to Grong, and then we would take this one back to. Yeah. Uh, and then that way, you know, you're still getting the velar initial here, right? Uh, but uh, the k prefix would drop out. So this solution would work in their current system. Like, like k rong would change into long in Middle Chinese. And then this series would get you conformity with the Shechan uh, hypothesis, but it turns out they generally don't reconstruct this anymore, which is they, they, they don't see Lang or, or Rang coming up with Krongs as sufficient reason for uh, reconstructing a, uh, a, a, a velar pre-initial. And um, why don't they see that? You know, maybe it's because they, they don't get the other evidence for the pre-initial from loans that they want or something like that. They don't really talk about it. But I would say that, it, like, just if we if we are sort of naive about it, this is a great solution for these uh, L K mixing uh, series. Like that. Um, so 
we're not even looking at such a series, but we did have one, right? Where, where to go? Where to go? Did we not? What we did we not have? Oh no, this one. Yeah, this one. Right. So um. So yeah. So like, if if it were me, <laughs> I, I think, and I'm not actually saying that. I'm just saying like. If you're you were driven entirely by the Shaken hypothesis, I would uh, reconstruct these first two with this kind of uh, curl wrong or something like that. Uh, but then what would we do here? Would we do uh, sukaran? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> or maybe we would do kusran. Yeah, that would be better because this wouldn't get what we want in the Chinese. Uh, but then, of course, we're sort of violating the Shaishan theory hypothesis anyhow. And actually, maybe this kind of difficulty that we run into in a series like this is why they don't uh, throw in these uh, velo prefixes uh, to make these ones look better. Uh, hi, uh, can you yeah. hear me? Yeah. Um, so uh, if I remember correctly, I think they, they, they still like reconstruct a tightly attached K uh, prefix for the for the for the session series involving the, the word for ghost, like for the for the glottal stop the uh, series. Yeah, 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 yeah. They do. Uh, so I I guess this is a question I've been wanting to ask. Uh, is I, I mean, if they have this strategy to like repair this session series series by in, involving a K. A prefix here, here, I I can't, I kind of don't know why they still do the uvula thing. I mean, certainly in the series you're talking about, it's a really good question, right? Which is say, if you, let me just actually explain to other people, which is if I say, okay, so, um, so let's just imagine a uvular series. So I have, I have, oh, oops, I should try and write in my system. So I have some, some of these, some of these, maybe a, one of these, you know, uh, and then a K, right? So uh, given what I've told you so far, you would say, okay, this is clearly a uvular series. And this one we take back to a, uh, you know, QH. This one we take back to a capital G. This one we take back to a Q. And then this one we take back to some prefix uh before song uvula yeah like this yeah so, yeah that's what they generally all all I went to like this right uh that's what they that's what I taught you yeah but uh what uh actually who who asked this question you just to get your uh hi uh so the, <laughs> the question is they can also get this k with a uh, K prefix before a glottal stop. They allow themselves that. And then why not say this is this, this is this. And now we actually have the answer because we won't be able to get uh, these from the glottal stop. Yeah. But in a series that only makes uh, 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 glottal and K, uh, th th there are two options, yeah. And as far as I can tell, uh, I mean, I think I think we either did this or we'll get to it. Um, they, 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 they only introduce these two options because otherwise they end up with two Shashan series uh, indexing the same syllable type, which is something they don't like to do. They like to, to imagine that each Shashan series points uniquely to a uh, syllable type. Oh, then, then this might also be the reason they reconstruct like the the one of the series we mentioned earlier with the uvula instead of with the vila because oh that's probably uh, true actually yeah 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 that's probably uh, because true. there is because the series for five is with the vila yeah uh, and that's, they that's were, yeah does everyone understand that, that I I was it here yeah so I was yeah, like, yeah, oh, this one. for this and then and then I I was just sort of tricked into giving the answer, which is probably because this is what they reconstruct for the series with with the with five, yeah? So this character. So this goes back to Nam. 
So if they if they have if they reconstruct a series based on na, then they don't want this one to be na. They want this one to be something else. So they maybe do this with it. Yeah. Um, yeah. The implicit argument here is that mu goes back to na too. I mean the. Um, so I'm just gonna say we have the same theory here, although it doesn't exist yeah, yeah. in quite this way, right? So if that was their reason, would it be very fairly easy to make it the uh, I agree with you. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> this one would be uh yeah, so then you know imagine that we have this as our series. So they would reconstruct this one like this. Uh, like just like I said here, right? And then like this. Uh, so let's say on Monday they reconstruct these, and then on Tuesday they run across this series. They say, "Oh, we don't want to reconstruct it like this because then we would end up with two series reconstructed for the same syllable type." So then they see what other, you know, uh, what other ways their the tools they've allowed themselves would get them the right reconstructions. And then maybe they do this, and so that's the hypothesis that they that, that that I say. Well, why don't we do this similar thing? Maybe the answer is because uh, for these ones, they've already used up that sort of spot. Yeah. Now, of course, there's still a question of like if you have two things and they could both be reconstructed two ways, how do you decide which one to do which way? Right. Although I would say in this case, it's 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 very easy because the Tibetan Berber languages are pointing unambiguous, unambiguously reveal or nasal. Um, but this is the sort of thing that they don't make sufficiently explicit. Now, I think, you know, they would say, and which would be fair enough, of like, look, that book took us 10 years to write and is like 400 pages, right? So what do you want? Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, I always want more. Uh, you get the impression that, uh, yeah, all of these distinctions are inspired by a contrast somewhere that they need to account for, but as a result, they, you know, they can account for more than there actually is. Yes, I think that like crowded in the nuclear uh, yeah, domain, yeah. for instance. Well, and you can, especially if you get like, for instance, you know, you get like, say, any T can, uh, or no, let me say, like, let's say how many sorts of the D are there? Yeah. Well, actually, let's say how many sources of uh, J are there in Middle Chinese? Yeah. So one is uh, D, and that's the most obvious one, right? D in fact, three syllables. Yeah. But then you could have Mata, you could have, you know, Mata. Uh, you could, of course, have mada and mta, uh, and then you could have a lateral, uh, and then you could have, if it's before a front vowel, you could have a G. Yeah, so, it, you know, you, it starts to feel like, sort of, <laughs> that there are no rules, right, that you can kind of reconstruct whatever you want. Um, but I think that's not quite true, right? Like, like they, 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 they do set out rules. Now, the other question is, do they always follow their rules? My impression is they generally do, but there are a lot of rules to follow. So, uh, it can be hard to know, right? Um, but I think the, let's say, I think the way, let or let, I'll, I'll wax slightly philosophical here and say, this is exactly the approach by in terms of reconstructing lots of distinctions that Carlgren first did, where, where he basically took all the distinction in, in Middle Chinese and back projected them on Old Chinese and then added more distinctions in order to account for the, the kind of connections that you see in Old Chinese. So you ended up with like, you know, 50 vowels in Old Chinese or something like that, right? So it was ridiculous. But then, uh, like people like Lo Chong Pei and 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 um, Polyblank just came along and said, actually, you know, this vowel you reconstruct only happens after dentals, right? So, uh, so they were able to clean up his reconstructions very effectively. And then I think the question is, uh, 
or are there gaps, are there complementary distributions in Baxter and Cigar's old Chinese reconstructions? And I, I don't remember it exactly, but I have definitely found a gap. I don't remember what it was, uh, but I think this is the sort of thing that, that needs more uh, exploration is just, you know, look at, you know, maybe, uh, maybe they, they've given themselves too many tools, so now they can explain far more than actually exists. So then uh, if that's the case, it, it's worth asking what, what syllables do they allow themselves to reconstruct that they never in fact reconstruct? Uh, and, then, and then that might be a way that we can kind of simplify the reconstructions. Yeah? And we're doing, you know, we first we, we explain S, then we explain sh, then we explain sh. Uh, now we have Z. So if, if, if a Z pops up uh, in uh, a uvular series, then we take it back to an S uh, before a uh, uh, right? Now, interesting to note that, right, we didn't see the S voicing before an M, before an L, uh, before lots of voicey things. Uh, but we do see it voicing before this usually. Uh, and then I say, okay, but the bachelor's cigar also reconstruct SD and SMT as sources of Z, but not on the basis of Shei series. They do it on with other evidence, more volatile evidence. Uh, okay, and then uh, we can also get this red reflex uh, Z in uh, this series. Okay, and then I just mentioned this, uh, which is usually uh, we, well, yeah, uh, there's an early uh, palatalization of velar before front vowels. And so then we get, uh, you know, this, this jug, we would usually take back to a D, uh, but here it has a connection with the G. Uh, and then we also have the jug in this series. Uh, so we reconstruct this series this way, but this would, this is a change that only happens before front vowel. Uh, yeah, and yeah, it, so I've just sort of said this, but uh, so in general, they think SG develops into G, uh, but their evidence, so this is not based on changing series, uh, but before front vowels, uh, SG develops uh, to J, and I do actually would say that the fact that there are these, you know, sound changes that only happen before front vowel uh, does kind of or let's say uh, either support some of their reconstructions, or you can say their reconstructions are de designed to deal with it. Right? Okay, and then uh, now we start to get slightly, if you like, stranger proposals. But so far, S clusters have gone to S, they've gone to retroflex S, they've gone to palatal S, then they've gone to Z, they've gone to palatal Z, and they've gone to retroflex Z. Uh, but here we have uh, changing into yeah, uh, which feels a little ad hoc, although it doesn't, it's not a crazy proposal, I don't think, but it feels a little asymmetrical, right? And then this is the evidence for it. Here you have a glottal stop, and here you have a stop, and, you know, glottal stops either have to go back to glottal stops, or they have to go back to uvulars, uh, and we don't have any way of getting what we want here, so uh, we propose a new sound change. Okay. Uh, and then uh, same thing before a uh, before an R gives us the retroflex in type. No, sorry, in type B cells. So this one's in type A cells, and this one's in type B. Okay. Uh, so you can really say it's it's something they have to use more than once. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, a very exciting one, I think, uh, is. S before a sna, so sna, uh, they take as going to tsa, right? So that also seems a little ad hoc, but it's great uh, in terms of explaining the relationship between uh, these two characters. And, uh, and everyone agrees that the word for a thousand starts as being the word for person with a line to it. So it, it does seem like, uh, you know, that, uh, I mean, this goes back to Ning, yeah? So this one goes, this one, Ning, and this one, Ning. And, um, and we can't, you would say actually, like, well, so, so, so run is, um, is Ning, 
Uh, and then uh, this one, we can't take it to sing because that would become sing, right? We've already, we've already talked about that. So instead, they take it to sing, uh, and then they say there's this sound change. Yeah? Uh, so M would be low end. Sorry, S what happened to S M? S M goes to M. And we have not discussed S M. We haven't, that has not arisen. And that's actually, you know, the sort of thing where like that, you know, you could ask yourself, why well, why why aren't there any smuzz? So uh, so let's just uh, keep track of what we end up with. So sna becomes sa, and now here sla becomes sa. So we, we are starting to see, you know, that it's not totally ad hoc, right? So here in this case, classic d and ya means we have a lateral, but then we have this sa. How do we deal with it? Well, why not propose an s cluster? Uh, and then that's I think it for the vortex resonance, but you say we're, we don't have SMA, right? Uh, and then you would say, is that an accidental gap or is, is there something wrong with the reconstructions? Yeah. Uh, uh, but then, uh, yeah, here we have, uh, they, they have ST becomes SA. Uh, here's SR. And this one sort of makes sense because we get the same thing but wrote it, right? Or yeah, well, retroflex, right? Uh, okay. And, and then we're getting to the really exotic things now. Uh, SB, they see as a source for uh, links between Z and Ba. This is the one example, as far as I know. So they, yeah, so they think it goes. Uh, spa or, or saba to spa to biza to za. That's their explanation. Uh, okay, and then I think I'll stop there because that was everything you can do with s prefixes, <laughs> uh, and that's most of it. Uh, but then we will have some other prefixes, some p's and some g's and some k's. Uh, so, uh, any questions? Yeah. How many percent of the shifting theories do you think work with just the plain shifting hypothesis? I have no idea. I would say uh, basically it's a, a lot of it has to do with how long they are. So I would say maybe half or more you can get with the with the sort of without the clusters, uh, but any really long series is going to have something funky in it. Yeah. That's my sense. You know, a lot of Chaitian series only have three characters, so you can get, yeah, so you don't need to, you don't need the big guns for them. So we think that's more than chance. Oh, yeah, that's a good, uh, I mean, <laughs> if it's all starting to feel a little too incredible to you, I suggest just stare at a Chaitian series, and then you say, there is something going on. Like, I think it's because, because most series have like, you know, let's say, I don't know, let's say it's, it's like our slow example or something like that. Yeah, so, so you'll have like D, D, Y, Y, R, and then I don't even remember what this goes to, so, yeah. So you have a lot where like the, the normal hypotheses, the sort of without the big guns, explains almost everything in a Shishan art series. But then you have these, you know, uh, what uh, hard nuts to crack. Uh, but, but you don't want to say, oh, you know, because what are you going to say? Well, they, they didn't know where to put this. Why, why did they put this one in a cell series, right? Like, like you, you need some explanation of what's going on there. Uh, correspondence of lasers to particles, something similar also happens in ionic. So some ionic diaries of fur while other ionic diaries of chair. You're, uh, you're talking about what, where they do a, a yeah, which is DB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
parallel to that. But how do the I nuologists handle it? So there's one reconstruction that handles it with pro. So pro becomes pro in one dialect and ch in the other. Uh, and others just assume that that ch goes back to a part of the light. Of so those, those are the two hypotheses. So, so like a pa and a pia. Yeah. yeah. So in Tibetan, you have pa becomes, sorry, pia becomes cha. So that seems quite, you know, and that is the sort of thing that I would rather some sort of, you know, bia, bia goes to ja rather than, uh, what was it, spa goes to. In Italian and French, I think so. Yeah. But I think the trouble is that we, that, that, that would cause other problems for them because because type B syllables all paralyze, and this is a very minor thing. Yeah. Okay. Are we even sure that is it that it is possible to have a contrast of voices and voice nasals after this? Like, it's just that's a good that's a good question. I mean, um, it's terrible, but is it outright impossible? That's kind of and do we have to give that? Yeah, I don't know of anyone commenting on the typological plausibility of sma. Yeah. Uh, I, I will say that they, so they have to allow that, right? Uh, but let's say they think, uh, so a lot of people want to reconstruct S clusters where they reconstruct the voiceless uh, nasals. Uh, and they say, when pressed about that, they say, yeah, sure. The voiceless nasals come from S prefixes, but there must have been sort of two waves of S prefixation where the sort of primary S clusters became voiceless nasals, and then there were some secondary X, S clusters that that change into S. Yeah, right. um, and so you you can say that like if you if you had a morphological process of S prefixation and you had voiceless nasals, then you would at least have the occasion arise where you would want to put an S prefix in front of a voiceless nasal. Now how that ends up getting realized, maybe with an epithetic schwa or something, yeah, you know, who knows? Yeah. But we always said that there's some vowel in these three right? Uh, in, in many cases, yes. Yeah. So that would certainly help. Yeah. Well, anyhow, I'm going to let you- Well, if that is devised a five in moves. Yeah. Then, then that would, then, yeah. th then, then- You could still make your voices natal with the high test. Yeah, that's what well, that's the question is, 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 do you feel like having a tight S before a voiceless nasal is, is something that a language will do? Um, well, we can explain all S voiceless nasal cases as loose prefixes with proper vowel, right? And that's the word with voiceless nasal as no. I mean, that's the sort of thing I think would be good to look into, like, just for the, for the record. The question is like, do, like again, are we giving ourselves too much machinery? So we have tight and we have loose S's and we have voice and voices nasal. So then you have like four different possibilities. This is the sort of thing where I think it's worth checking. Do they actually use all four possibilities? And if they don't, can those gaps be explained uh, by altering the reconstruction? Yeah. 